Okay, we continue our series on Stoicism where we go through the Enchiridion by Epictetus and the translation How to Be Free by Professor A. A. Long. And we had ended up with chapter 18. 18. Okay, let's go. Whenever a raven croaks ominously, don't let the impression carry you away, but straight away discriminate within yourself and say, none of this is a warning to me. It only concerns my feeble body or my tiny estate or my paltry reputation or my children or my wife, but to myself, all predictions are favorable if I wish them to be, since it is up to me to benefit from the outcome, whatever it may be. Fortune telling is nonsense. Sorry, there's nothing scientific about it. And this goes for a lot of things in life, okay? And this is something that is very dear to me because I am a scientist, right? I did my PhD in cognitive psychology. I have trained in scientific methods. There's all kinds of things that we derive meaning from. Dreams or weird signs. Of the, the, well, there was three ravens in a row, so it must mean this or that. I have found myself thinking, well, let's cost a toy. Let's talk, what? Let's cost, I can't even speak English anymore. Let's toss a coin. And if it's heads, then it means this. And if it's tails, then it means that. And then I caught myself and I thought, what am I doing? It means nothing. When you toss a coin, a stochastic process, process of chance, determines whether heads or tails come up and both have about a 50% chance. If you roll a die, the same thing happens. If you look in a crystal bowl, that same thing will happen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. Your dreams mean nothing. Weird portents mean nothing. They mean nothing. And that's okay. But then don't try to derive meaning from something that is in itself meaningless. And there's so many things that people do. I will leave through a book and I point at a word and that word will have meaning. No, it has nothing. It has absolutely nothing. It has not a thing. It has not a sausage. Nothing. There is no meaning. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, something I feel rather strongly about, the last thing in this short chapter I think is most important. But to myself, all predictions are favorable if I wish them to be, since it is up to me to benefit from the outcome, no matter what it may be. Right? Well, here's the thing. Look at portents. Look at whatever type of uh, dreams or prophecies or whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is the meaning you derive from it. And here is the meaning you should derive from it. Try. Work hard. Do everything sincerely. And then things may work out. And things may also not work out. I can go right now to a psychic and pay vast sums of money to have my future predicted and in a lot of cases, there is a 50% probability of that prediction coming true, because it will or it won't. But that doesn't mean anything. What is much more sensible is to think about what you can do and what you cannot do, what you can take responsibility for and what you cannot take responsibility for. It makes sense to look at what you can do within the limitations you have. You can keep, or you can uh, uh, keep taking on assignments at work, right? You can do that until at some point you burn out, right? And I don't need a fortune teller to tell me that. I don't need to listen to a raven croak or look in a crystal ball. This is very simple. At some point, you can't handle it anymore. And it's up to you to determine when exactly that time will arise. Right? So maybe, 
maybe instead of looking for all sorts of portents and, and little things like, oh, this will predict that and that will predict that, maybe we should accept that we cannot really predict a lot of things. Maybe we should accept that we're in charge of some things. And here's the thing, the future is something that you cannot really predict. Ten years ago, if you would have asked me, do you think you will ever live in Canada, I would have said no. Because at that point, I was born in the Netherlands, my family is in the Netherlands, my friends are in the Netherlands. I grew up there. What reason would I have to go to Canada? But then I met Aziza, and Aziza is Canadian, and then at some point we moved to Canada. Which made sense. At the time, that made sense, right? And now I am in Canada, and I like it in Canada, and it's fine in Canada, and I have friends in Canada. But I could not predict that. I genuinely would not have been able to predict, no matter how many ravens croaked, that I would end up in Canada, and that right now I'd be sitting in Canada recording this video for you. Now, does that mean that we should not look at the future? Of course not. Of course you should look at the future. You would be remiss if you would not. But you have to be realistic. You don't know what's going to happen 10 years from now. In fact, you don't even know what's going to happen a year from now. Right? That doesn't mean you don't need to think about it. But it does mean that you need to realize that you cannot fully predict what will happen because you are not in control of every single parameter in your life. Things will happen. Tomorrow I could die. In fact, tonight in my sleep I could die. Or I could walk down the stairs and check the mail. I could slip and fall and die. Now I don't want to make this very morbid, but the thing is I don't know, right? So planning for 10 years from now that doesn't work for me. Planning a bit in advance is very sensible. Planning years in advance is difficult. So here is something I do. And this is something that you see in a lot of Stoics. Uh, when you read uh, works from Marcus Aurelius, from Seneca, they all describe this. And I think it's very important for everyone to realize that instead of thinking so far ahead about what to do then and there, how about you do it now? Marcus Aurelius says this, stop debating about what it means to be a good man, be one. Makes sense to me, right? Don't try to plan ahead for 10 years from now, how about you start today? And today, you plan to be a better person than you were yesterday. You have made mistakes yesterday. I have made mistakes yesterday. Everybody makes mistakes. But instead of just focusing on those mistakes, maybe you could think, what can I do today to improve myself, to become a better person today than I was yesterday. That's maybe what you should plan for. Your goal tomorrow is to be a better person than you were today. But you don't start tomorrow, you see. You start now, right now. Irrespective of how many herons fly through the sky, or whether the sky is purple or blue or gray or purple or black or purple or green, you start now. Because it doesn't matter what the signs say. How about you look at what you say? And if you can self-reflect, which we all can, then you know what you have to work on. And then you work on those things. And you will slip up. And you will fail. Congratulations. You're a human. We all do that. But that's not the issue. The issue is not to never fail. That's an unrealistic goal to plan for. If you intend to never make mistakes in your life, this world will be a continuous source of disappointment for you. 
What you can plan for is to make as little mistakes as you can. But even better, correct the mistakes you've made. Become a better person. Every day, a little better. Tomorrow, better than you were today. Today, better than you were yesterday. A week from now, you could be dead. Right? At any point. Marcus Aurelius is very clear. He writes about that a lot. Any time, any point in time, it could be over. But ask yourself this. If right now you would leave life, would you be satisfied with who you are? If you're not, work on it. Start today. Start correcting the small things. Work up to the bigger things. You won't become an enlightened sage overnight. Nobody does, right? And we all have our flaws, we all have our mistakes. But we can try to minimize them. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect because no one is. But tomorrow, go up to the colleague that you slighted. Call the friend that you uh, called names, whatever, they had a fight with. Talk to this person, talk to that person. Or do something yourself that doesn't involve any other people. Dress a bit nicer if you don't like your style. Right? Park your car a little nicer so that you're a bit more social. Right? If you see, I was going to say rubbish, if you see some garbage, why don't you pick it up? Here's something I do. If I'm in a store, department store or something, and I see an article of clothing that's fallen on the ground, right? I pick it up and I put it back, put, like, put the hanger back, put it back in the hanger, put it back on the rack. This is a small thing. Does it change the universe? Not really. But I can tell myself at the end of the day, you know what I did? I did this. I saw a, a speech once from a, an admiral in the, uh, the United States Navy, I think. Yeah, admiral, obviously. So, and he said, every morning, make your bed. And at the end of the day, you've accomplished nothing. Then you can say, no, I did. I did accomplish something. I made my bed. Small things. Forget about signs. Forget about meaningful omens that's all vost it doesn't make it doesn't make any difference the difference is made by you you're in charge you make decisions you change yourself and you're always in control of what you do right make that change a little better every day And that's all there's to it. I hope this was useful, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye.